paghimbas sa pantun kayo mabisawa. The Bajau are a nomadic sea people. They can be found in parts of Southeast Asia, such as Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines, and number perhaps not much more than 100,000 people. Traditionally, the Bajau even today always live on the sea. Back in the 1960s and before, all Bajau lived in houseboats. They lived their whole lives on the boat. cooking, and washing their clothes. The sea and the boat was the playing ground for the Bajau children. Even then, the Bajau lived as a tribe community of usually 6 to 12 houseboats in a tribal group. At that time, they often moored in lagoons off the many coastline islands of the Sulu Sea that stretch from Mindanao to Borneo, like island stepping stones across this vast sea area. to fetch firewood and fresh drinking water or to bury a loved one in a tribal graveyard island with the Bajau come to the land. Sometimes also, an old Bajau would be left on a deserted island alone to die. Oy. Such was life for the Bajau nomadic sea people not so long ago. The old Bajau man soon dies, unable to find food and water and shelter from the unforgiving sun. A Bajau man's son comes and places a replica of a Bajau banka boat upon this man's grave in the hope that this Bajau man will sail to a better place in the next life. This is still a practice today. Living at sea poses many dangers, not just from the many constant typhoons that often inflict much death and destruction in these waters. But what the Bajau fear more than a typhoon is being attacked by pirates. Today, Kimo is paddling to an island in the Sulu Sea. But then, Kimo looks back and in panic, he sees pirates pursuing him. He tries in vain to paddle with all his might, but the pirates quickly catch him. The pirates shout, Give me your monthly dues to us or die. Helpless and pestleless, Kimo tries to defend his family, but he is fatally injured by the pirates and is thrown into the sea. The pirates steal everything, their fish, even their boat, and often they will kill all the Bajau. But it is too late for Kimo, Papaya, and their baby to pay the pirates, for baby's cry is no more.
fish bombing is also very common in these waters. They simply toss a stick of dynamite into the sea and bang, all the sea corals and reefs are destroyed. And the fish float dead upon the water as the villains happily gather their catch of destruction. Pirate-infested waters of Seleucy have driven many Bajau further to shore and even as far as Cebu in central Philippines or north to Manila. Here in Cebu, the Bajau have long since abandoned their traditional houseboats and most of them now live in stilted huts in coastal regions of Southeast Asia like the Philippines, Sabah, Malaysia and Indonesia. In Cebu, most Bajau men are still trying to fish for a living. But that can be a hit or miss. So hungry, the children go to the market to scavenge and beg for discarded rotten fruits and then sell the leftover to their fellow Bajau villagers. The Bajau are famous for their diving skills. Women and children dive for a peso coin tossed overboard by passengers at the port of Cebu. Here in this small house, one of the church ladies demonstrates the love of Christ to this dear old sick lady, Kabdiya Aslani. Rachel spoon feeds her with special nourishment milk. But as we leave and say goodbye to her, she suddenly sits up and reaches out with her weak, bony, weary hands to me and says, Mag sukur. Thank you. Little did I know this would be the last time I would see her alive. Within a matter of days, this dear elderly lady Kaptia was dead. Her death came to me as a complete shock. I did not know she was dying. Uh, most people here know uh, that lady's a good person, good attitude. <laughs>
tribal graveyard area is now only a few square meters because much of the former area is now being stolen by others. This lot is already full. But look at this. Destiny digs a small hole in the grave of his baby brother and feeds it with baby milk powder. <laughs> and so they begin to dig. Barely one foot down, they find the first of many bodies. They try to drag it out. But this dear one does not want to leave its resting place. It takes several strong men to finally haul it out. <laughs> this process is repeated as two to three more still decomposing bodies are dragged out of their grave, still draped in their malongs, the favorite clothing of the Bajau. It's hard to look and breathe the stench of death's aroma. Some of the Bajau men make fun of the skull, placing a cigarette in its mouth. It's a gesture to them, but it's futile and disgusting and heartbreaking to me. Finally, after a long dig, they cannot go deeper. There are still so many bodies below. But first, Takbilaran Ilan, acting a type of priest, anoints the grave with incense and calls out to the spirits of the dead to welcome Kaptiya to join them. The coffin is placed inside the grave bed. The grave is just deep enough to cover the lid of the coffin. Then the old grave garments and bones of others on top. The Bajau believe she is now in close company and communion with her dead ancestors. Finally, they place a carving of Kaptiya upon her grave. And then, a beautiful small green mirror beside the carving. We use the mirror for the second life and for the style and for her beauty. But then, I'm horrified as one of the men smash it, shattering the looking glass into pieces. We broke the mirror so cannot, grave robbers cannot steal it. Within a few minutes, the grave site is abandoned. Thank you.